hi there thank you so much for your love for being on this channel and watching me even as i bring to you episodes on our well-being in today's video we are looking at a matter of course that has become of a medical emergency the matter goes like this when somebody mistakenly have sex and unprotected sex with an hiv suspected patient or with an hiv suspected person it could be that you did not know that the person had hiv and so after sex you realize that the person was um, hiv positive but you didn't know or the person is hiv positive but you didn't know and so there's something that i'm going to show you that is of course it's medically approved um, in, in hospital practice and um, i'm going to show you what you can do about this situation within 24 hours not 25 hours within 24 hours and so stay with me even as we go for this short break and come and i take you through what exactly you need to do within these 24 hours so that even if there was an exchange of body fluids with you and the person you will not contract the virus thank you very much welcome back and so looking at this matter it is not just only having sex with an HIV person, but also when there is an exchange of body fluids with somebody that is of HIV. And as we already know, when somebody has HIV, let us just look at what happens to the person in the system. There's a lot of stigmatization. And so the person might not be able to tell you, of course, I've been, I've been privileged to be in the place of counseling HIV patients, and I know a lot about this situation. And so the person might not be okay and the person might not have the confidence to tell you that this is my status this is my situation and so sometimes we call some of these situations as um, an accident so it could be that you bunched into this person and then there was some kind of romance and then you had an unprotected sex or and probably there was an exchange of fluids this is what you need to do within 24 hours and it must not be 24 hours 30 minutes you know <laughs> within 24 hours just try to do this. A lot of people when they go through this kind of situation because they uh, they do not actually see any light at the end of the tunnel, they quell themselves, they keep themselves, they lock themselves up in the room and they begin to declare fate and other stuff. Of course that also has an effect on the subconscious but um, actually there is a prophylaxis of, of course which I'm going to be talking to you about and that is the PEP, that is a post exposure prophylaxis of HIV and uh, a lot of people do not know this and I think uh, I need to bring your awareness to this. I'm not saying it will happen to you, but if anything like that happen, happens, it could be a rape case, it could be uh, sex by accident, it could be um, exchange of body fluids by accident, not voluntarily. I don't think a normal person will actually decide that uh, this person is having, um, has the virus, and I will have something to do with him without protecting myself. And of course, that's why this is called medical emergency. And of course, it is quite accidental and so when situation like this happen i'm going to be introducing to you what we call the pep that is a post exposure prophylaxis even as we have prophylaxis for malaria there's also prophylaxis for hiv just um, to actually protect you from the virus and i'm going to take you through the whole process now this is what you need to do the victim that has been raped or in a way accidentally exchanged body fluids with the hiv person this is what the victim must do within 24 hours. The first one, find a good hospital. You should find a good hospital because in good hospitals, the PEP are not for sale. And then they are there to cater for emergencies. And that is why you need to um, go to a good hospital and then report the situation. Now, when you go to the hospital, they, they are going to be, you are going to be channeled through some protocols. And I'm, I'm going to tell you a few of them. So actually, you, you meet a doctor and then the doctor will tell you to go for labs especially on the hiv um, test and of course um, that one is, is just done to be sure that you're not lying about the situation because some people sometimes think that the prophylaxis can also cure hiv <laughs> and so you have to do the labs and then they have to know your status um, within the 24 hours that the incident happened they have to know your status um, even as they're about to give you the pep and so you would also have to be taken through some counseling process. A lot of people, when this happens to them, you know the fear and the intimidation that brings to them. So there has to be a very good counseling for them. Um, being in the place of 
counseling HIV, I have known um, quite a few of things on how to handle HIV patients and I see so much of stigmatization even as you are talking to them on a normal basis about how to take their drugs. There's so much fear and there's so much intimidation that um, comes upon them any, anytime somebody is exposed to this virus. Now we are going into how the drugs are given to people. Now in the PEP um, dosing, it's normally done by weight and actually if the person is 40 kg and above, uh, he's he or she is supposed to be given an adult dose. But if it is below, we just do simple mathematics. If less, more divide. If more, less divide. And then we just strike. And then we give um, the person an actual dose supposed to take. Yeah, so we are going into the generations of these um, uh, PEPs. The first one that came, which is a little complex to take, and actually supposed to be taken for a month. After I speak about the first generation, I'll, I'll talk about the last generation. There's a last generation that is in the system now. And um, you could be fortunate to get the last generation because the last generation is not so um, difficult to swallow. It's just one pill a day for a month, for 30 days. Uh, but for the first generation, it's a little bit complex. But they all work. They are all very effective. Yeah, so with an HIV person, through the process of rape, um, exchange of body fluids accidentally, and then any kind of thing that falls within the range of accident. All right, so going into the first generation, the first generation we have the lopinavir rotinavir. Lopinavir rotinavir. Of course, the strength of the lopinavir is 200 milligram, and that of the rotinavir is 50 milligram. And of course, if the person's weight is 40 kg and above, you're supposed to take two tablets two times a day. All right, and it is given together with combiver. The combiver, the I beg your pardon, the combiver is a combination of zidovudin, lamivudin, zidovudin, lamivudin. The zidovudin strength is 300 milligram, and the lamivudin strength is 150 milligram. And that one is also is supposed to be taken one tablet twice a day, one morning and one evening. That is when the person's weight is 40 kilogram and above. Now, we, let's come to the last generation, the recent one that has come in the system, which is also effective as the first one. All right, so if you are given any of them, they are all very effective. They are going to help you. They are going to work. You just have to take the drugs within a month, and it's going to serve as a prophylaxis for you. All right, and so I'm going to be talking about the last generation. Of course, it's the one we have in the system right now um, that is also very you know, easy to use. You don't have to take so much of it you just take one tablet for a day and that will be for 30 days and that but like I said it could be that your hospital might not have the first generation the hospital which you went to might not have the first generation they are having the second generation every one of them is okay all right so I just wanted you to have a general idea about these drugs and so the last generation we talk of uh, there are three drugs that have been combined together to make one drug and we have the tenofebe we have the lamivudin and we have the dolitegrave. The tenofebus, the tenofebus strength is 300 milligram. The lamivudin strength in this one is 300 milligram. And the dolitegrave strength is 50 milligram. You take one as a single dose for 30 days. And please, when you start taking this prophylaxis, you do not have to stop. You do not have to stop. So this is what you need to know exactly about post-exposure prophylaxis of HIV and so if there's any accident that you might have known somebody to have experienced or you yourself you do not need to panic about it you do not need to I mean, lock yourself up in a room and start crying and start cursing yourself there's actually a prophylaxis for that and you need to act very fast within 24 hours after 24 hours it's not going to work it's never going to work so this is within 24 hours of the incident. All right, so thank you so much for making time with me and then um, watching me talk about this. It's, it's a pleasure having you. Thank you so much. See you another time.